Hey everyone, I hope you had a chance to catch my last video where I walk through the steps of the DeepQ learning algorithm and also walk through the code. If you missed it or if you're having a hard time following this video, be sure to go back and check out that one. I'll leave a link in the description. I had done the explanation on the very simple frozen lake environment using these two simple two layer networks. Today we'll talk about how we could possibly go from frozen lake to an Atari game like Pong. Pong is a significantly more complex environment than Frozen Lake and we're not ready to train it yet but hopefully this video will get us one step closer. Remember when we trained the agent on Frozen Lake, the Q-learning formula trickles the reward back to the starting state and that is how the agent knows the path. So how would it apply to a game like Pong? Here's our computer player. And here is our agent paddle. And of course, here's the ball. What if we divide this into a four by four grid? Let's say the ball keeps traveling this way and we win a point. So we get a reward of one here. Now we know that if the computer paddle is up around here and we're around here, we want to keep the paddle in this area and then Let's say the next time around, we, we end up in a similar situation and our ball is around here. We might get a Q value of 0.9, might tell us to go up a little bit. And let's say the ball is around here the next time, we might get a Q value of 0.8 and might tell us to go down a little bit. Finally, the ball is around here. We might get 0.7 and that might tell us to keep the paddle going up. Does this kind of look like frozen lake to you? Kind of, right? Obviously, a 4x4 four four grid is not going to be able to capture all the situations of where the computer paddle is going to be along this axis, where the agent paddle is going to be along this axis, and where the ball is going to be flying around. But if you look at this image, if you think of this image at the pixel level, this pixel is basically consists of a color code of red, green, and blue, and the same thing for the next pixel. So an image is essentially a grid consisting of height times width pixels. We can actually send all these pixels into the neural network. But the problem is, even for a small image, let's say this is 100, this is also 100 pixels. You got 100 pixels times 100 pixels times three channels. This is going to be 30,000 input nodes. With that many nodes, the network is going to take forever to compute. So what we need is a different type of network. And this is where convolutional neural networks comes in. A quick reminder of what the network looks like in the last video. It's a simple two-layer network with the input being the states. So again, this is a 4x4 grid. So the states are labeled like this and so on. So for example, if I'm in state 14, the input is encoded like this all the way to state 14 and state 15. So the input is 16 nodes with a one on the node where the agent is located. That goes into the network. What comes out is the four possible actions. And we get a Q value for each one of these actions. And of course, the largest Q value is the best action in this situation, which obviously is going to be this one. Let's see how a convolutional neural network fits into this. Here's a great resource to demonstrate a CNN. If you've done any kind of image classification in machine learning, this should look pretty familiar to you. And if you don't have that experience, I encourage you to go through this page to learn more about this type of network. I'll just describe it in a high level and see how it relates to our frozen lake environment. In this example, it's sending a cup of coffee into the network broken out by the three red, green, blue channels. 
You can see that this image is 64 by 64. As it goes through the network, it becomes smaller. The size of the image gets smaller. Here it becomes 62, goes down to 60, 30, 28, 26, and finally ends up 13. So the image has significantly shrunk. However, the features of the image is not lost. Finally, this last layer goes into the output layer. In this case, this image classification problem, it guessed that the input is a cup of expression, which is correct. Now, in our case, the output would be the possible actions and the Q values estimated for those actions. Okay, let's see what we need to change in our current network. Obviously, the input layer no longer looks like this. Also, the hidden layer disappears. We'll replace this portion with the convolutional neural network. What we can do is we can take this network as is and just insert it into our DQN. Now, what about the inputs? Normally, we would pass this image into the network as is at the pixel level. Here's my first pixel, my second pixel, and so on. And as you saw before, we need to break out all the channels. All the reds goes into its own matrix. And same thing for the greens and the blues. So we'll pass three separate matrices into the network. Now, unfortunately, this environment doesn't return me the pixel level information. It just renders it onto the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'll just treat each one of these cells as a single pixel. So that's my first pixel. This would be my second pixel. And essentially, I'm sending in to the network a four pixel by four pixel image. And since I'm only passing in the location of the agent, if the agent is in that spot, I can make this agent a certain color, let's say blue, and all the other cells will default to white or something like that. Here's my code from last time, lake underscore dql. And reminder, my code is in GitHub, so check it out from the description. Now you can see that our DQN is very simple. It's only two layers. And as mentioned before, we are getting rid of the hidden layer and replacing that with the convolutional layers. Okay, I basically made a copy of this code into underscore CNN. So here you can see my convolutional blocks. I have block one and block two. And this corresponds to the architecture shown in the CNN Explorer. Now I'm not going to go through the code, but you can go ahead and compare the code against the architecture here in the CNN Explorer. So conf11, one, one, this is block one. And then conf2, this is block two. Okay, so those are the two blocks. The 10 here, you see the channels 10 here that go throughout the network. Those are the 10 nodes that you see here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 on each one. After the convolutional layers here, the output of this goes into the output layer. Reminder that what goes in are three two-dimensional matrices. What we need to do is flatten all the matrices into a single one-dimensional vector. That is what the flatten function is doing. After flattening it, the output of the conf layers are going to go into the output layer. Now you see all these bunch of lines coming out of here and going into the output layer. We need to tell the output layer the size of the input. So this one right here, there is a way to calculate this, but the easier way is just to send an input into the network and then let it fail when it gets to this point. It's going to error out and complain about input shape mismatch. At this point, you can print out the shape of basically the output of block 2. And using that number, you can stick it in here. It's going to be 10 corresponding to all these nodes multiplied by something to get that number. Since Frozen Lake was sending in 4 pixels, or four by four pixels, the input here just ends up being 10. So that's why I have 10 times one times one here.
The second change that we have to do is the input. Previously, as mentioned before, we sent in a vector of the location of the agent. So if the agent is in state one, position one of the vector is marked as one and everything else is zero. And this is what we're sending into the network in the previous video. That's what these two lines are doing. Very simple. Now what's changed is we're sending in an image now. So for CNN, we're sending in three matrices, one matrix for red, one matrix for green, one for blue. Here's an example of what we're sending into the network. If the agent is in state one, we're marking position one with some color, and then everything else is just zero. And of course, uh, this first one is the wet matrix. You would have two more for green and blue. Point nine here is the normalized color code of red. I'll explain that in a second. Down here, we're creating this empty matrix. The first parameter is batch. We're dealing with one state at a time, so batch is always gonna be one. And then we have the three channels, red, green, blue, and then we have the four rows and four columns, okay? These two lines, all this does is calculate the position in the matrix of the state. So for one, it's calculating the row and column of where one is gonna be, okay? So this is just basic math. This code here is to set the color. So for example, we're setting the color for the spot. I just randomly selected this color code here. And to normalize it for color codes, 255 is the max. To normalize the color code between zero and one, I'm just taking the code divided by the max and then I'm returning it. So that's it. Uh, here's a couple of lines for me to print out the image so I can see what I'm sending into the network. This is really just for testing. Let me comment this and show you. I'm gonna put a break point before returning and I'm just gonna run this code. All right, so of course the agent starts out on the top left and we color top left into this uh, pinkish color. Everything else is just black. So this is the image that we're sending into the network. Hit F5, you can see the agent moving to the next spot. Comment this code back. I just want to show you that we can train the network it's just the same as last time. I'll just do it with slippery off, train it for a thousand times, and then we're going to test it. Okay, F5. Okay, training is done. You can see that the agent has learned the path to the goal. All right, so in this video, I showed you how to add convolutional layers to the DeepQ network and how to send the images into the DeepQ network. And we can see that it can train the agent just the same as before. Okay, so if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a like, subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one.